it's so far i think what's been more than six months since the original crystalia story um was published in the los angeles times off the back of an allegation that a young lady had on social media about chris being inappropriate blah blah blah, blah. the outrage ensues he immediately probably gets cancelled pulled off of everything on the streaming platforms and essentially um kind of left and abandoned by his friends in the comedy scene now for a fan like myself it was a bit disconcerting to view like jesus christ and i thought you guys were all friends and suddenly you know no one's kind of giving a shit about anybody but it did raise some interesting conversations about how you are meant to deal with it if you're actually going for, if how you're meant to deal with it if you're a colleague or a peer of crystal isn't it are you meant to kind of get in front of the situation and defend him even though he's not defending himself to a really stringent you know in in you know in a normal way or do you just kind of wait to see how things play out in general now obviously on this channel i've kind of made my position clear i think a lot of the his quote-unquote friends essentially ditched him and didn't give him any um opportunity for recourse they didn't provide him with a platform to kind of speak his say his piece or even just use their platform to kind of speak for him and i felt like the, especially when you looked at the allegations a bit deeper and you actually read between the lines and you kind of looked at some of the other corroborating stories a common theme and a common pattern that did evolve from those or narrative that you can kind of glean was that he was a bit of a bad dude and um, he probably did um exp i won't say probably did take advantage of his position i won't say exploited him because i'd say a lot of the women most of them were knowing knowingly got into communication with him knowing kind of what his intentions were but i would say he kind of took advantage of it i would say he probably was a bit naive obviously with the wife and child at home you shouldn't be doing anything anyway but if he did i think the fact that he was actively trying to pursue anything that moved whenever he was another city on the road whenever he got like a you know a compliment from somebody online he'd kind of sign to dms the messages with the underage girl and then he kind of ran away and then when she turned 18 he came back again there was some really sussy stuff going on there's right some kind of quintessential um definition um of creep behavior but to say he's a pedophile i've always thought that was a bit excessive especially when people were kind of using the fact that he was on you um playing a pedophile the fact that he might have made some you know some weird comments on his podcast trying to be funny um the fact that he tried, he likes young girls which is not a shock considering he's a you know entertainment person and he lives in hollywood there's loads of other dudes in the same position as him probably older that have gone after way younger girls that shouldn't be that much of a problem i think we're very aware that you know men sometimes do like younger ladies Ladies and younger ladies sometimes like older more accomplished men that shouldn't be an issue but i think his position regarding the optics of everything and the fact that he had a bit of a i think i think that really hurt him was the fact that he has had a very clean sort of like cookie cutter image even though he's not a clean comic but he did kind of have that sort of like um harmless sort of appeal to him so to start, just kind of see him creeping on girls on the dms being conniving and devious you know setting up a snapchat it kind of did kind of you know um throw you for a loop uh but again the more concerning thing i think overall was just the reaction of his friends right the people that have benefited the most from him being in the comedy scene the ones who got millions of views by putting them in his platform the ones who you know most of these people were speaking about him being a killer and a beast the things the ones that people were kind of championing as soon as he got involved in any kind of trouble any kind of um scandal they were quick to scamper away now again if this was a really serious allegation and the, the evidence was very damning then i can definitely understand but i think when you dug deep a bit deeper and he just took a bit of a breath step back a bit and looked at what the actual story was it's just a dude being a creep now if you don't want to be his friend because you're not uncomfortable with him doing that fair enough but the fact that they all kind of um by their actions right sort of uh made it valid that whole pedophile allegation it kind of made me feel a bit of a way so um not a lot of them have been speaking about him since i guess he's kind of disappeared from the public conversation he's no longer alive he doesn't really update his podcast we don't really had anything from his openers and all that malarkey um his closest hollywood friends have kind of you know essentially decided not to speak about him joe has not uttered his name ever since i think with the exception of maybe a couple of times but um we don't really hear much from him but it's good to sometimes hear from the people in the scene in general in terms of how they've been able to deal with it and not deal with it. And one of those is Andrew Schultz and um, on the Tiger Belly podcast. This is a recent one, 227 or 277, sorry, where he's promoting his own special on Netflix is out at the moment. So definitely check that one out. But they speak a little bit about um, how they basically dealt with Crystal Lee's allegations and how they felt they might have been able to do things differently going forward. But some interesting points being raised here. So I'll play a bit of the clip for you now. 
they 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 teach. Oh, there you go. Come and play. Their dog. They disappointed the Wasabi. They do all. The <laughs> he has one. It's all her, by the way. She's amazing with Wasabi. I literally just go to the studio all day, and I come back, and I just walk Wasabi at like midnight. Yeah. So, and yeah. that is my contribution. So, if the dog is well trained, it's it's all her. Okay, here it comes. How, how did you feel when when you were in New York when um, some of these comics were going down? Uh, dude, it was wild because your whole scene just got shut the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. It was like one was after another. It was unbelievable. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And it at first I was like, is this some revenge of the nerds shit? Like Because <laughs> that's what I thought, right? Yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, the cool guys had their run. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like it, it almost seemed, dude, it seemed like it was like a, a targeted hit. That's what it felt like. You know, some of the people that were brought down were close friends of mine. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I think at the time, a lot of us did think that. I think there was this theory that, you know, because Joe has signed the Spotify deal, people were upset. There were kind of a concentrated effort to sort of get everyone cancelled. And as well, I don't know, it never really transpired, but we never really heard anything. But there was a time prior to Joey Diaz leaving LA and going back to New York or New Jersey, sorry, where he mentioned that there was a Los Angeles Times journalist or some journalist that was out there fishing for stories. They were calling you know, um, comedy clubs in the California area and basically trying to glean stories about who were, you know, some of the more devious and, um, you know, scandalous um, comedians and what sort of stories they could kind of pull from them to put in a bigger piece about the toxic nature of stand-up comedy in LA or California. And that never really transpired. I think that was probably, that I think is one of the reasons why some people said that Eddie Bravo has disappeared, right? We don't see Eddie Bravo on any podcast now at the moment. That supposedly is part of the issue. This kind of rumor was going around in a scene that everyone was going to get taken down. So that might have been the reason why a lot of these guys stepped away from Chris and Brian, right? Because they just didn't want to be anywhere near the collateral damage if that sort of like, you know, cancelling um, Hiroshima bomb went off anywhere, right? And they've all, you know, for the most part, most of these guys with exception of Brendan have kind of worked really hard to get their position in Hollywood. The last thing they want is to be cancelled for something they didn't do. So I can kind of understand where they're coming from in that regard. Yeah. And people that I knew, I've known for 15, 20 years. Did you know that they were up to these shenanigans? You know, I'm I'm staying... Um, you know, I've said my piece on, on those on that on those issues. Pussy. Um, I don't see <laughs> around him. He's the perfect guy to talk about. This. I, I know. What's yeah. the deal, bro? Let's talk, man. I Who think gives this a is fuck? the perfect time to actually do it and say. And if you're wondering why Bobby Lee's being a little bit res res um, hesitant to kind of jump in and say his piece, he also had a a period just after I think no, recently, maybe a few months ago, where it seemed like people were. It seemed like there was a bit of momentum about getting him cancelled because of the very questionable stories that he had concerning his um tendency when he was single to go to parts of Southeast Asia and acquire the services of very young women, right? And some of the stories were very, very questionable. And then he then came out in expert way to deflect and sort of kind of defeat the situation. He kind of confessed that some of these stories are lies, which is, you know, we know most stories comedians tell on stage aren't true. But he then suggested that everything he says is a lie, which definitely way to protect himself because he felt as if the cancelling hammer was going to go and smash the top of his head. But that's why he's being a little bit scared and he has no backbone well, what i told those guys and what i publicly said on podcasts is i i i don't know what i don't know right yeah. um you know when you when you're with guys and you know obviously these two gentlemen that were brought down they who are we talking about we're talking about delia and callen <laughs> <laughs> These I guess like, the people gentle. know, right? Uh, like, I know, I know. Some of you don't know. He's yeah, so nervous. <laughs> These two gentlemen. I, I don't I'm, want you to talk about anything that makes you uncomfortable. No, no, it's, yeah. it's not that uncomfortable, and yeah. I'm willing to talk about it. It's, um, is I know them in one way, right? Okay. Yeah. Like, I'm their, like, you know, silly, you know, friend. Yes. And they're silly, like, you know, Asian guy friend. Yes. And we giggle, and we, we go out to diners, and we, you know, hey, we, we want to see Toki the Dum Dum, which is my penis. <laughs> Right, so I go. You want to see Toki? And you know we're eating pancakes. Uh, it's right. possible that bit. <laughs> I know, I know. I will next time. Thank you. So Bring that joke up. <laughs> yeah. Very um, there you go, there you go. encouraging and helpful to my own personal life and career. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, you know, I have this specific you know relationship with these guys. Yeah. I don't know what they do. You know what I mean? Behind closed doors, I see them at the clubs, and then sometimes we'll go out to eat. You know yeah. What I mean? So yeah. it's like it's a, it's. A that's the narrative that I didn't like. That's the same thing that Brendan and Brian did when they started crying on camera. Brendan did the epic line, I can't talk, right? 
I don't think any sensible person honestly believes that they had no idea that both of their friends were maybe some creeps and pussy hounds. I don't think that's true. I think they all knew, right? Brian spoke quite oftenly about how, you know, um, how much, you know, how many girls used to get back in there when using comedy and, you know, he's always talking about that sort of stuff. Um, Chris D'Elia made complete sense considering that he was essentially, you know, got his much of his success early from Vine. The fact that he's always posting pot top, topless pictures of himself on social media, right? It makes complete sense that he would be a little bit of a fiend when he gets on the road. That's not surprising, especially from people that are closest to them who see them, you know, at night when some of this more devious behavior comes out of them. So, so some of them just suggest that they only knew the comedic side of them, the helping you out with bits and tags side of them is really, 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 really disingenuous. Like they must think we're all idiots. But again, I think it's less about us and it's more so about um kind of uh keeping the the journalists with their pitchforks at bay. That's probably more so to do with it. But I'm sure most of them knew. Again, I, I don't think they knew, you know, allegedly that Callan was out here raping women. But I know for sure most of them knew that Callan and Gadelia were definitely pussy hounds. That is, uh, there's no way. I, I'm not, I'm not going to believe that. It's a weird thing. Like, I don't I, like that how people, there are certain people who think it's like your or other people's responsibility. Sorry, I like to... Carla Vesca, the skipper, because mm. relevant. Shit in your hand. <laughs> I You're know. not responsible for your behavior. <laughs> that's right? like, like, I'm responsible for that. Exactly. Right? Yeah. No, but yeah, I think that's unfair. Like to put that in, and I think that that's why I felt part of it was like a lashing out because what I saw a lot was this: there'd be an accusation against like Chris or Callan, right? Yeah. And then the the nerds or like these comics that weren't getting up at the store, they weren't like getting up. At, and even New York, I heard like I saw like New York comics tweeting about it. Like, why the fuck did you don't even know these people? Yeah. And what they were the, the way that they would tweet is, yeah. The L.A. Uh, kingpins are going down. No, there's two people who've been accused of this, but it yeah. seems like you've had a lot of like animosity towards this one group of people, and you're looking forward to their demise. Mm. And I thought that was kind of corny, you know, because, yeah, because you actually want... And that's interesting part of it. I think that's a good point that he makes, and it's also something I think that you could ascribe to the journalist. I think when the deal got, because again, I, I think some of these journalists are just, you know, what did Tim didn't say? They have less dignity or they have less dignity than a prostitute. Like they just, you know, they're unscrupulous, horrible people. Stay away from journalists. But I think a lot of these journalists definitely had their nose put out of shape when the news got leaked about Joe Rogan's Spotify deal. You saw it with the lady, what's her name? Alyssa Milano. She tweeted out saying oh, she can't believe that Joe Rogan has so many listeners when she feels that she has a superior pro pro podcast and what she does, whatever it may be. So there's definitely a, not a hint, a large spoonfuls of clipping jealousy when it comes to the Joe Rogan stuff. But I think they were so unaware of what was going on in the podcasting world that when that news came out, it sort of all caught them off guard. Of like, no way can this um, right-wing, racist, um, homophobe guy be getting so much money from a company they deem to be very liberal in Spotify, which they kind of generally are, which kind of a bit of a kick in the teeth. So that might have been a precursor to the cancellations because then they saw all these friends who they kind of deemed to be deplorable or, you know, questionable human beings, the people, you know, the people that Seth Simon writes about on his Twitter account, they will definitely be like, okay, cool. If we can't take out the main dude because he sort of inoculated himself and he has a few money, let's take out some of his associated um, or some of his associates, like people like Brian Callan, who he's been friends with for more than 20 years. And the hope I think that they had was that by taking those guys out and uh, as, as kind of associating them or directly pointing to Joe as the main common denominator, it would somehow muddy his name and then lead essentially to, I don't know, his deal getting ripped up. I don't know, whatever it may be. I think that was definitely in the works there. One, don't care about the girls. You just care about seeing these people that like made you feel inferior go down. Mm. And that's right. the most selfish part of it all. Like right. if you actually yeah. really cared about the girls, yeah. I understand your 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 I understand your anger. Yeah. You know, but if you just want to see someone you don't like go down, you're a bitch, dude. Yeah. And wasn't that that was a great point too, because it wasn't that a missed opportunity. Because I think there's definitely something to be said about the difficulty in navigating um any kind of industry that takes place at night right i think we've seen it with djs already i've, I've spoken about it with eric Mueller's story there's definitely something 
that happens, there's definitely a different experience if you're trying to come up in a scene, if you're a man and you're a woman working in the entertainment industry, whether you're working as a bouncer, as a bar back, as a DJ, as a comedian, as a singer, it's definitely different. And there's definitely pressures and, um, you know, very um, troubling situations that each person gets themselves in, more so than women, that we definitely need to look at as a kind of scene or as a society and kind of make some, or make up some solutions that's going to mitigate or kind of resolve those issues. So there was a missed opportunity there with the Crystal Lee and Brian Callen story, right? In terms of, hey, why do some of these young female comedians feel like they need to get involved in any way, shape or form sexually with somebody in that industry to make it? that shouldn't be something that they should feel that they should have to do if they want to do it because they're you know agency over their own bodies fair enough but it shouldn't be one of those things that's sort of like an unsaid thing that's sort of out there that you can do because i'm sure for some people it has definitely worked right we've heard these stories about flipping harvey weinstein and that how despicable and horrible of a person that he was right that there were stories that supposedly he had sorted out some people with you know he, he basically was responsible for advancing some female a, um, actors careers uh if they were willing to exchange certain sexual favors with him again you know deplorable and no one should ever demean themselves to that level and of course he's having to um serve his sentence in prison so he's been judged in that regard but that is definitely a thing that exists now that shouldn't be existing so there's a prime opportunity there to sort of you know attack that situation and address it head on but it didn't. Instead, it just turned into a, let's just take down those two guys so that we can get their spots. Because I'm sure there was a lot of that too, right? A lot of people saying, oh, especially Chris Lear because he's got more of a sort of slap, slap-tastic-y, bro sort of way of doing comedy. I'm sure a lot of people were like, yeah, we want him to get cancelled because we just don't like his stand-up. And he went to have their other friends promoted. Like, you look at the kind of venom um and sort of anger that that girl what's her name and the girl that was on Bert's podcast the Irish girl when she came on and she was complaining about the lack of women in comedy and stuff like she was really angry like whether or not you agree what she says or not there was that she definitely felt like she'd been hard but done by by the scene right she definitely felt like the LA community scene would was sort of like purposely putting up roadblocks more so than they would do for a man and not allowing it to flourish now you kind of sprinkle that story, kind of narrative in her head with some rampant, you know, misogyny, whatever it may be, you're going to have a problem at your hands, isn't it? But again, they didn't have a chance to um, address it in any way, shape or form. Instead, it's just take out the individual so that we can advance ourselves, which, is, you know, um, again, you're not protecting the victims. You're not really addressing anything. You're just kind of looking out for yourself. And it sort of like reminds me a little bit of what happened with the, with the Me Too movement at the end where essentially i think it was it me too or one of those charity one of those kind of um uh initiatives where essentially they found out that a lot of the money hadn't been used in the right way a lot of the people had kind of you know selfishly um advanced their own careers off the back of that collective goal like a lot, a lot of unscrupulous characters come in and take advantage of that situation so it's no surprise that that's what happened there i also that's i, I agree but i also when people and this is something that i left out when all this shit was going down yeah. in my public statements was, um, you know, You're so um, scared in it <laughs> because there's this narrative that these two guys are like, you know, predators and you know what I mean? Bad people. Right. And you know, the narrative that I have, right. And this is sincere is, is that, um, and I, you know, that I, I see them as giving loving people. Yeah, because that's who they were to you. To me, hey. you're allowed to feel yeah, that to way. To me, you're, it's like I, your grandparents around you are sweet, and yeah. around like a black guy, they're probably not as sweet. Yeah, that's just like I <laughs> Like that's you true. still love your grand. Yeah. I think it's a great point, and I think essentially that is where that's the issue that I kind of had with a lot of the responses, and I think that's how literally a lot of people had, especially if, if you're meant to be your friends. I think friendship should be that. Friendship should be, hey, I don't agree with what you are allegedly been accused of, but. I've had more good times than bad times with you as a friend. So I'm going to be with you as a friend. I'm going to hold that memory in my head. And when someone asks me about you, that's what I'm going to comment on. And you didn't hear that a lot. You didn't hear a lot of people say, Hey, he was a good guy to me. I don't know. You know, I, 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 
well, I've never seen something like him do something like that. And I'm going to be there for him as much as I can support him through this bad time that he's going through. And then hopefully, um, reach to some sort of conclusion. I don't know, whatever, just something of those kind of lines. You didn't hear that. All you heard was people distancing themselves, kind of adopting and co-opting the language that was being used online by people that wanted their careers to kind of, that wanted obviously the person that was accused to go down. There was not a real lot of standing up for them. There was more so a lot of kind of sad excuse making and distancing, right? The whole Brian Callum thing. I've never done a show with him. I've never been on tour with him. We don't hang out. I only see him at the comedy store. And then you see loads of clips come on the line of them obviously hanging out and acting like best friends. It's just like, what are you doing? Do you know what I mean? Like, if, if you can't be there for your friends, who the hell are you going to be there for? And it's, again, it's ironic that the way that Brian kind of acted towards Crystal Lee, especially in public regarding the allegations, um, he was kind of hit with it even, f you know, with a far more serious allegation of rape and he essentially has been relegated to doing shows behind a paywall on on fucking patreon screaming at flat earth deniers you know what i mean it's just or flat earth believers sorry it's just a very very um crazy way to end the year but again let's see man hopefully chris kind of comes out from the comes out of hiding and we've seen very soon but what do you think do you think chris is going to come back anytime soon or do you think it's a wrap for him going forward i would like to see him come back again i think there is a opportunity for him to redeem himself i think mistakes have been made of course i'm sure he's learned from it hopefully he doesn't slide in anyone's dms anymore regardless if they're 18 or not and just kind of uh, concentrate his home life but um let's see let's see let me know in the comments down below